So all of these questions are really centered around the problem. The problem is where the value is. It's like, ouch, this hurts. That's the thing that's going to get their attention. It's going to get their money and their focus. We don't always want to work on urgent things. Sometimes we want to work on, you know, aspirational things that are like going to transform the organization over a few years. In really high quality organizations, the gap between where they are and where they want to be, that is a painful gap. That is a painful and urgent thing, even if they know it has like a three year time horizon. Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we are talking about powerful questions, uh, and we've talked about mindset questions and kind of like life questions. And today I wanted to return to some sales questions, really important sales questions that can help you to uh, overcome a lot of the challenges I see that consultants have. One of the big ones of which is how do I price the work that I'm doing for a client? I don't know how to come up with the price. Like, what is it based on? A lot of times it's based on information that comes out of discovery calls and what's coming out of discovery calls are answers to the questions that you ask. So when you ask the right questions, powerful questions, you elicit information that you can use to price your services, to price an engagement, uh, and to really understand like what is going on with a client and if you want to help them and how much you can help them. Years ago, I had a colleague who brought me in to work potentially uh, together with her with a client uh, and she led the discovery call that we were on and over the course of it asked certain questions and um, the person answered her and uh, when she hung up the phone, she turned to me and said, OK, so I, I think we can really help him. And I said, I don't think so. She was confused, like, why? Why not? And I said, uh, that guy doesn't have a problem. What do you mean? She said, uh, he has a this and a this and a this going on. And I said, he didn't say any of that stuff. You kept asking him questions. And for him, he's like, I think everything's fine. Everything's fine. Kept coming back to that kind of thing. So whether she didn't build trust or whether that guy is clueless or whether he really doesn't have a problem, whatever it was, I don't pursue that kind of uh, client. Because if someone has come to us and they've agreed to have a conversation with us and then they won't or don't have a problem, there's nothing we can do. So clearly the first question that we want to get an answer to is what's their problem? So most discovery calls, and I've talked about this a lot in how to uh, do discovery calls, most of the time, no matter how it's structured, eventually you're going to get back to the format where you say, what's the problem that's going on here? I want to hear, what is the problem? Do they believe there's a problem? Do I agree that that is the problem? And do I want to solve this problem? Those to me are key in figuring out if someone is a perfect client for me. Are we a fit for each other? So let me back up a little bit and let you know how I get into this information from a client. Somebody's agreed to a discovery call with you. I really like to have, even though uh, I teach my clients how to work from templates, I've used that template uh, a lot. And so I'm comfortable just inviting someone to say, you know, briefly, what's happening? What's going on? Why did you want to talk with me today? And giving them a chance to just talk generally about their business. When I was doing um, sales with larger organizations, sometimes you'll hear from multiple people in the room and they'll tell you, here's the situation, here's what's going on. I, again, I'm I'm probing for the context of this, how long has this been going on, that kind of thing. Um, you can also ask, like, what's the goal? Like, what are we building towards? Uh, people like to come at discovery calls from different uh, directions. Is it, do, do we want to hear about what's not working or what they want to have working or what? Uh, sooner or later, though, we're going to end up getting to a situation where I want us to zoom in on of all the things we've talked about today, what would you say is the number one problem or challenge? I really want to have them identify that for multiple reasons. One of those reasons is I want to be sure that I agree with them that that is the biggest problem. It's always interesting when you're like, they think they got a, a production problem, but I know they have a people problem or they think they have a sales problem. And I'm like, you have a, an operations problem. It's always good to hear from them what they think the issue is. A lot of times the, the problem uh, has a root cause that they actually don't necessarily know about, which is why they need you. So that's the kind of the getting to the problem phase. 
if you do this a little more from kind of like a positivity point where you're like, what's your goal? Or people don't necessarily bring me in for those kinds of, of things. Well, if there's an aspiration, like we brought you in because this is our goal and this is the thing that we want to get to, that's fine. But nevertheless, there is a here, right? Where are you now relative to that uh, goal that you want to have? In our work, almost all of us, there's a current situation, there's a desired situation, and then there's a gap between those two things that is where we, the gap filler inners, come in. We're closing the gap between where they are and where they wanna be. So I wanna hear what that current situation is so that, um, I, again, that I make sure that they, I agree with it and that they are clear on it themselves. The second thing that we wanna do with this problem is we want to ask, why is that a problem? Now, for years, I did not ask this question because I thought it was a stupid question. I was like, I've just told you what's wrong. And then you come back with me at like, why is that a problem? Well, duh, obviously it's a problem because. But the truth is, it isn't duh, obviously. It's not obvious. Many times since I have asked that question and when they tell me what the answer to why this is a problem, I think, oh, well, that's not what I was going to say. Well, that's not what I thought you'd say. I'm surprised. So it's always helpful to ask a question, even if you think you know the answer and listen to what they say. So if somebody says uh, our sales are down and even though it might seem obvious, why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because like, listen to what they say. Is it a problem because, because my dad owns the company and this is really embarrassing. Well, that's different from, well, we have a competitor who's gonna swoop in and, and eat our lunch if we can't get our, um, our sales going. Our sales are down, that's a problem because it means the production line isn't working or does it mean that uh, no one's buying, the economy's bad. I wanna hear why it's a problem for them. And 80% of the time, I'm surprised by the answer that they give me. So try that out in your discovery calls, bringing in a question like, why is that a problem? And seeing where it leads you. You can even ask it more than once. Why is that a problem? Well, because my dad's the owner of the business and I'm afraid I'm gonna get fired. Oh, well, why is that a problem? Well, because I don't have anything else backed up. <laughs> I'm backing this up. All right, so what if it's not a ridiculous example? What if it's our sales are down? Why is that a problem? Well, because we have another competitor who's coming in and we're concerned that they've already been making deals with some of our customers. So why is that a problem? Well, because um, my salesperson, I'm, I'm afraid, isn't qualified to really be, be in um, making those deals. Okay, good. So then I know now uh, we can work on if I agree that this is the situation, we can work on getting them in, the, in on those deals that they're looking for and keeping an eye out for the competitor, etc. So you get a little more context, you get a little more of the motivation behind people, um, and it reveals what your job would be if you were to take on the client. Now, the last question that I like to ask here usually comes because someone will come to me and say, I really want to get this client, uh, but I don't know how to price this project or this engagement. How, help me price the, the engagement. And what I will say is like, well, what's the, what are the numbers on it? Uh, what's the problem? What is the problem? Uh, well, it's this. Well, how much is that problem costing them? Oh, I don't know. I didn't ask that. Okay. I can't give a number out of the blue if I don't have any information or context for that. We, and if you do value-based pricing and you don't just go like, well, it's a hundred dollars an hour or it's a thousand dollars an hour. If you're doing value-based pricing, which is pricing our services based on the value that we're bringing that client, then we need to know what the value would be. The way we figure out the value is by either what the problem is costing them or what the problem once solved, like the solution, how that would benefit them. So uh, what's the problem? Well, our people are leaving left and right. Why is that a problem? Because uh, we are losing our best people and now we're down to this like skeleton and crew and we're not confident that they're uh, uh, good and we're about to become a worse place to work. Uh, you're, this is ruining our reputation. Wow, that sounds like a big problem. Yeah, it really is. Uh, we're really scared about it. What do you feel like this problem is costing you? That's a question a lot of people are afraid to ask and it's a really critical one to ask. I, I'm concerned that a lot of women are con, uh, afraid to ask this question because 
they either don't know the answer to it, or we're going to start to have to do uh, some calculations that um, some of us don't feel comfortable doing. So what do you feel like that problem's costing you? I, I, I don't know. Okay, well, let me help you figure this out. There are, are uh, facts, like we can look up and get information about what problems tend to cost. So if somebody has uh, their sales are down, well, what is that costing you? That information is available. Like they can go and say, well, if we were doing, you know, a thousand units last month and 800 units this month, so that's a big difference. We can do the math on that. And we have to do the math on this. We have to figure out how to calculate this stuff. Uh, if your sales were where you want them to be, uh, what would you be earning instead? Well, we want to be doing double or doing, ah, got it. So 2000 units is, is what you're looking for. So that's a sales example. If we go back to the people problem, there are very large consulting companies who have done the research to say the cost to replace a good person is this much. So we can bring that in because our clients probably won't know it. And if they do know it, if they know um, we had a good person and we're not going to be able to replace them except for you know paying a new person uh, even more money. Yeah, but the the time to replace them is also expensive. So when you start to do those calculations, you get an idea of the value of your work to a particular client, what it's costing them, what they could be earning if they had this situation solved. Uh, so figuring out that uh, begins with asking the question, well, what is this problem costing you? So what if it's more of like um, a, a situation where it's not necessarily a financial thing. So it's um, it's lack of engagement. Lack of engagement can be quantified with numbers. Well, what if it's, um, you know, they're not getting as many donations or they're not getting, like, if you start to notice, well, what if it's like people are disenchanted? What if it's a health? Almost every situation in a business nowadays can be quantified and we can research that and bring that information in so what's this problem costing you is a knowable uh answer and even better if you're in a conversation with the client and they don't know the answer to that you can be a resource and you can bring in that information and begin to educate them about like you didn't realize this but this problem is actually costing you like this much a year so it, it's a, a way to prompt urgency and kind of like get them out of their stupor so that they take action faster. Uh, and they're taking that action with you. So all of these questions are really centered around the problem. The problem is where the value is. It's like, ouch, this hurts. That's the thing that's going to get their attention. It's going to get their money and their focus. We don't always want to work on urgent things. Sometimes we want to work on, you know, aspirational things that are like going to transform the organization over a few years. In really high quality organizations, the gap between where they are and where they want to be, that is a painful gap. That is a painful and urgent thing, even if they know it has like a three year time horizon. That kind of like um, improving the quality of our leaders or retaining our best people or um, changing our brand, evolving our brand reputation so that we increase sales like that is going to be motivating to them. And the distance between where they are and where they want to be is painful. That's what I found with my highest performing clients is that when they come to me, if I say, what's the problem? It isn't oh, everything's terrible. It's like, OK, things are great. And I really want, like, I want to grow like this and I want to have more of this. And where I am right now, I don't know how to get there. Can you help me close that gap? Like, that's the urgent problem for them is that they want to close that gap. So you can see it doesn't necessarily appear looking like a problem. If I would say, like, what's the number one problem or challenge? They might say to me, I don't know how to do it or... I'm I'm concerned because I've had a really good year and I'm concerned I'm not going to have as good a year because it feels like a fluke. Feels like I might not be able to do that again. So listening for this problem language is going to help you close more sales. It's going to help you close them for higher value uh, engagements. And very often for a, in, in a way that feels in, in better integrity with you because you're going to feel like you really did solid work in, um, in figuring out how you can help the client. I hope that these questions have been helpful for you and that you're going to feel more comfortable in your sales meetings going forward. When you're quantifying this value like this, you're going to get more, uh, you're going to close more clients for higher value. If you have any questions about how you can do that, you can find me on the socials. 
And otherwise, I am wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business.